My name is Adam Perkins and the purpose of uh, this review today is to compare the Benro A2970F with the Manfrotto 055X Pro B. I was in the market for a tripod around $160 range. Um, a lot of reviews came out on the Manfrotto 055X Pro B and it says it was a great tripod. And I also found the Benro A2970F and there weren't hardly any reviews, written reviews on it and there were no um, video reviews on the Benro. And so I decided to get my hands on each of them and try and compare the two since the two, they seem to have pretty similar specifications. So we'll just <clears throat> extend the Manfrotto here, like so, as well as the Benro. Um, the legs both have an insulated piece on them. Manfrotto has it on two pieces, whereas the Benro only has it on one of the legs. These flip switches that extend the legs on each of the tripods also seem very comparable. They're high quality. Um, they feel durable and sturdy. And they also, both of them have an option to tighten them down if you, you know, um, if closing it doesn't secure the leg, you can you can get an Allen wrench and tighten it down. So here's the Benro. I'm about six foot four, so that kind of gives you an idea with the central column all the way lowered and both legs sets extended. Gives you an idea of how tall the Benro is. I'll do the same to the Manfrotto. Alright. So here they are side by side. Um, when you're looking at just the leg extensions themselves, you can tell that the Benro is slightly taller than the Manfrotto. Again, I'm six foot four, so for most people, this double leg extension, you got an, you know, you also have your head on there. Even for me, this is going to be pretty good height, uh, a good height for me to be able to see and for anyone else to be able to see. Well, let's move on to the central column for the Manfrotto. It has a single knob. Let me show you right here. Right there, it's got one single knob. And this knob is kind of the, is the single control for, for everything on this uh, central column. So you loosen it and it extends. This is the height, full height capacity of it. Let me tighten it down and I'll show you the height capacity of the Benro. This one has three separate knobs and we'll address each of them a little bit later. There's one here, one here, and one here, hopefully you can see that. But I'll just do the, I'll just extend the central column. And this one just pops right out. So you gotta be careful not to pull it all the way out. But again, let's put them side by side. And even though the Benro's legs are a little bit longer than the Manfrotto, of course that central column makes about that two inch difference. The Manfrotto's slightly taller than the Benro and when you have everything tightened down, they're pretty, you know, they're pretty, these central columns are not gonna give very much, they're pretty sturdy. Both of these have the option to go horizontally. So to do that for the Manfrotto, again, there's this single knob. You unscrew that single knob. And then right on the bottom of the central column, let's get the bender out of the way. Right at the bottom of the central column right here, there's a button. And so you pull it all the way to the top and then push the button and it'll extend it just a little bit more. You can hear it click in place and then it lies horizontally and can swivel side to side. With this knob also loosened, you have the option to move this, slide it like this. It's nice to have one single knob to worry about so you don't have to try and figure out, okay, which knob does what. The only thing I don't like is it seems to decrease the functionality because um, once I tighten this down, I lose motion, I lose this motion, I lose this motion, and I also lose this kind of motion once I tighten it down. So well, let me show you the Benro, this aspect of the Benro. So the Benro, as I mentioned, has those three separate knobs. One knob here allows you to raise it up and down and tighten it down. A totally separate knob here allows you to swing the arm side by side. It also extends 
You can also loosen it and go this way as well on that separate knob. And then you can rotate it as well with this third, this third knob right here allows you to swivel it from side to side. One thing that I do not like about the Manfrotto, let's loosen this, is in this horizontal position, there's only one single position and it's, I'm guessing it's supposed to be 90 degrees even though you can see it's a little bit beyond 90 degrees. But I, you know, if I wanted to stop it right here, if I tighten it down, it doesn't stop. And whereas on the Benro, because I have that separate knob, I can really stop it in any position that I want. I can stop it there, stop it there, or put it upside down, stop it there. One thing I do like a little bit better about the Manfrotto is in this horizontal position, um, it's, it's right in the center right here. The base of this is being really well supported right in the very center. Whereas if you look here on the Benro, this base of the central column is quite separated from the central part of the tripod, which to me makes it feel like a little less sturdy. But this claims to carry 22 pounds, whereas this claims to only be able to have a load capacity of 15 pounds. So I might be wrong in my, in my thinking. And you can see that this piece that holds it right here I, th I believe it's um, aluminum. I'm guessing even though it's kind of separated from the central column, it is still pretty sturdy. But one thing I also wanted to mention, this swivel on the Benro, it's a really smooth glide um, with this little knob right here and then you can tighten it down. On the Manfrotto, you unloose that one knob and it, it's not horrible, but there, does, there doesn't have that nice smoothness to it. It's just kind of free a free glide and it kind of catches and bumps every once in a while. But with the central column extended, or horizontal in the horizontal position, on both of them, you can extend the legs out um, to be into multiple positions. You've got these little silver tabs right here. Right there, you see that? And you push them in and that allows you to extend the leg out. And then as I lower it down, you can see it clicking into each new setting. So I really like that about the Manfrotto. So what this enables you to do, it gives you a very flat base to work off of. Well, let me show you the Benro, how it works. Instead of those little nice buttons, the Benro here, I don't know if you can see, it has these tabs and you just simply pull them out. That allows you to extend them. It doesn't have quite as many stops and it doesn't, when I slide it down, you notice on the Manfrotto, they clicked into their next setting, their next, uh, yeah, the next spot. Whereas here, you have to push it in for it to stop. Okay, now down in this lower position, you can see, I'll start with the Manfrotto again. With the legs fully in their flattened position, you can see how close this central arm gets to the to the ground. The then row, so you can see, there's about my fist fits underneath here in its most extended or flattened position. And then last of all, one thing I really do like about the Ben row as well is it comes included with the traveling case. And if you look in here, it comes along with these little spikes that you can put on the bottom of the feet. The Manfrotto does not have an included case. And the last thing, the there's this little hook on the Benro. Um, I like that because you can add a, a weight to increase stability when it's in the upright position. So they're pretty neck and neck, but I think I'm gonna choose the Benro just because it has the Manfrotto has some nice conveniences, but I believe that the Benro just has a little bit extra functionality and it seems just as high of quality as the Manfrotto, just as sturdy, in fact, sturdier according to its um, specifications. Hopefully this was helpful for you um, and may get a little bit of word out there on the Benro tripods.